Good morning, bom dia, buenos dias. It's great to have you all here again. This is the start of day two of our event on AI and inclusion. Just a quick, quick reminders uh, about our, our event, especially for those who are not here with us at the start of the event. Uh, so this event is on record, so make sure that you remember that when you make your comments. Uh, when you make your comments during the, the, the sessions, make sure that those comments are direct, quick, and that you state your name before you make uh, the comments. Since the event is on record and there is photo and filming being done, there is a special area for those who don't want to uh, be on camera that's uh, on the way back uh, of the auditorium. Make sure that you use it uh, if, you, if you need it. But I think those are more of my practical details of today. Today, it's a very different day from day one. So day one was all about plenary sessions and us having a discussion here in the auditorium. Today, we will use the museum quite a lot. And we are having the breakouts to discuss specific topics, doing some deep dive and some of uh, issues. And of course, we have a second round of our beloved animal-oriented cluster sessions uh, in, in the afternoon, but this time with a more complex challenge. So make sure that you're up for it in a good spirit by mid-afternoon. So we will begin with a quick recap, recap what happened on day one and some introduction on the global network of internet and society research centers. And for that, being the moderator of this uh, first session, uh, I would like to, to ask my, my dear, dear friend, uh, Urs Gasser from Berkman Klein Center to, to, to come to the stage to, to have this first session. So Urs, please. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Good, yeah, ready? Kind of? Totally ready, always ready, good. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here, bright and early, I know, I know, but we'll get through a, a great day that will energize us. Um, so I was hoping to do three things quickly. First, uh, say a few words about the global network of internet and society centers being aware that some of you are deeply familiar with that network, but others not, since we opened up this event also um, to guests who are not part of the network, so I'll say a few words about that. Uh, second, as Carlos introduced it, um, to capture a few uh, highlights from yesterday uh, as a kind of a first attempt to bring some themes together, and I'm sure Malavika and her panel will then also continue the conversation, uh, and later on in the breakout we will link back to some of these themes. And then finally, uh, I turn over to Becca for a few uh, words and instructions about the cluster group meetings. So um, let me just give a brief overview. So by the way, who represents an internet and society center of some sort or think tank in the room? Well, great, okay, that's critical mass. Um, so the Global Network of Internet and Society Center started actually five years ago, so happy anniversary network of centers to all of you guys, um, with a symposium that uh, we hosted in Boston. And the idea was very much um, to bring together not only individuals who think deeply about the impact of digital technology on society, uh, but really build institutional capacity around the globe. Um, the motivation behind that, I want to be very honest about it, is twofold. Uh, on the one hand side, uh, we all know we live in a truly uh, globally interconnected world. And many of the policy debates, many of the big questions about the future of society and technology, like the one we're having here today, of course, uh, is, is global in its DNA. But if you look at the question, who can actually participate and who has a voice in these global debates, uh, it's largely either powerful governments or powerful companies. Civil society and academia, I think, are still catching up to build the global capacity that is necessary to participate in meaningful ways in these global debates. We have made much progress, thanks to all of us over the past few years. 
uh, but particularly for academia to find a voice in these global conversations. That was one uh, of the driving forces. And the second one, uh, also more closely related uh, to, to the academic work, although the network also includes centers that are more think tanks and not based at universities, is we need more evidence-based decision-making, right? So many of the topics we're talking about, of course, run the risk that they produce bad headlines. The killer robots will come and take over the world, right? And that's uh, what may make it into the newspapers and may shape the public perception and the perception of policymakers. So how can we, as a community, provide evidence or at least better, more accurate, more grounded information for decision makers both in the private and public sector. So these two factors uh, led to this birth of a, of a um, network, uh, building institutional capacity. We started with eight centers, and today I'm happy to report that we are over 80 centers around the world. So for many of you representing centers, this may be the first event actually, uh, it's also worth pointing out that in the meantime, we uh, even started to build regional hubs, including uh, the one in Asia, Digital Asia Hub, led by uh, my wonderful colleague and friend, Malavika, uh, but also recently led by another wonderful friend uh, and colleague, uh, Wolfgang, who's somewhere over there, over there uh, now in Europe, uh, starting to bolster the collaboration and strengthen the collaboration regionally. Of course, you see we have much work to do. We have uh, good representation, but at the same time, uh, the African continent is still uh, 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 you know, largely not represented in the network. So I'm particularly thrilled uh, that for today's event, we have actually a strong group of uh, colleagues and friends from Sub-Saharan Africa joining us. And I hope we can work together as individuals, but then maybe down the road as, uh, as institutions to strengthen this network and make it more diverse and more inclusive. So, so thank you particularly to the African colleagues for making this trip. We will have a network of centers discussion tomorrow afternoon where we will talk more about the roadmap, the work that is ahead. We will link it back to this conversation about AI, but of course AI is only one of the many topics, whether it's uh, issues around uh, uh, encryption and or surveillance or hate speech on the internet. There's so many issues where the network can play a, a role uh, and we'll talk more about that tomorrow afternoon. How do we prioritize and where are the opportunities for us to collaborate? All right, quick recap, second point. Um, Thanks much to Elena. Where is she? Elena is there. She was working till three o'clock in the morning to compile these slides. So what I'm doing is like slide karaoke, you know, I sing two slides that she made uh, till late in the night. So thank you, Elena, for the summary. I think it's really good. It's highlighting a few points. Uh, the first couple of points that, that we distilled from yesterday uh, can be grouped or clustered around conceptual issues. I think one of the themes that emerged yesterday was really this question of how do we deconstruct AI and inclusion? Is it AI and or versus beyond also including inclusion? You know, what's the relationship between the two? And Ansaf led us off, I think, with a very powerful slide with four circles that um, suggested four key dimensions of, of the interplay between the AI and the inclusion. And I won't repeat that, these are just kind of mental links back. Nishant, of course, in his uh, keynote then reminded us that we have to, or urged us, I should say, that we should be move beyond computer and computation to the lift realities of the computed and actually uh, uh, think more of a mutual common core between AI and inclusion. Um, we centered quite quickly around this question, do we even need to have a new vocabulary as we, as we think about what was previously uh, called inclusion in the age of AI? So that's an open, ongoing discussion also for today. We also touched upon the question of uh, um, education and, and, and supporting policies or policies that are actually uh, uh, making existing gaps uh, widening. 
We then had another uh, really important point, I thought, uh, in the discussion with this shift, potential shift as a hypothesis. Are we, we should we move from, from a view on inclusion towards uh, uh, self-determination, uh, particularly in the light of some of the um, uh, uh, imperialist Western values embedded in AI, uh, the questions of power, the burden we place on underrepresented communities to actually perform inclusion. We had a, a few very powerful narratives um, and uh, I think got a sense overall of the urgency of this debate as the technology is progressing so quickly and is rolled out into society while we are still catching up to have these normative and value conversations as a society, as a global uh, community. So I think these were some of the, the, the threats of discussion coming out uh, uh, with respect to uh, the conceptual. Throughout these debates, um, uh, of course, given where we are and the commitment of this event, we had a, a very strong lens or perspective and looking at these issues from the perspective of the global south, but also uh, underrepresented populations more generally. There was one line like that, that in some uh, parts, in some regions of the world, uh, there is still a lot of excitement, and that's also great, I would say, uh, as, as AI uh, is kind of making it into, into the regions. We heard from Kenya and India, an overall very positive view on, on the use of AI and its implications. But the question came up in that context, well, how can we actually have a more uh, balanced discussion? Uh, uh, in these cases, it's also about bringing in some of the challenges to the conversation. And I may add, in other parts of the world, it may be the other way around, where we talk so much about the challenges, but forget to talk about the opportunities. And as Ronaldo and Carlos mentioned yesterday, of course, also during this event, we want to uh, keep both in mind. We also talked about binaries and whether or not good and bad AI are actually the right categories to have a conversation or whether we have to move uh, beyond uh, such um, dichotomies. Uh, we heard uh, interesting examples from South Korea. We also looked at corporate practices briefly in an exchange during the um, plenary and, and uh, the discussion about Palantir and, and some of the um, hard questions that arise at this intersection between public interest organizations and private uh, technology uh, companies, um, uh, providers. So uh, ultimately, many of these points uh, culminating in the question, what are actually uh, mechanisms and, and new, new designs um, that we can implement um, to hold those who have power as they shape, as some of us shape with industry in the room, uh, the future of AI and also the future of who participates in society. Now, of course, it was more about uh, uh, introducing big questions as about already answering uh, all of them. We will answer all of them today, naturally, right? Um, hopefully some of them. Uh, and so here are a bunch of open questions. Um, how do we uh, incorporate the perspectives of those who cannot participate in AI and development? Uh, obviously a key one, I just mentioned the oversight mechanisms. The broader question, can we even, is it even worthwhile and to what degree to think about technical solutions to societal problems? Clearly came up when we were talking about bias and the question of amplification of existing biases through AI. Um, and. Uh, um, also the question of um, should we take uh, some sort of an individualistic approach as to what extent is it about the individual uh, and its autonomy versus kind of bigger ecosystem questions and how do we bring these uh, perspectives like Luhmann and Habermas for the Germans uh, among us, uh, how do we bring these two perspectives together. So these are a, a few quick points. Uh, I was particularly excited throughout the discussion that we also identified a number of action items. Uh, uh, here are a few. We talked about uh, the potential of an AI interoperability framework. As I'm an interoperability freak, I have to mention that. Um, we also had a very interesting uh, proposal by Mark, and I hope we can talk more about it, about the formation of connected 
cooperatives for machine learning, training data, and several other suggestions. And I hope we can continue to collect such examples uh, and also use cases and case studies. Uh, here are a few listed. We want to collect more, both in terms how can AI be used to address some of the challenges previously known as inclusion challenges, um, but also where are some of the bad examples and what can we learn from it. We will have a session today at 4.30 where we continue the, uh, the study of use cases from different uh, regions and I would love to use the network to create some sort of a repository of good and bad cases and what can we learn uh, from it. So these are a few quick remarks from my side. Um, again, thanks to Elena for compiling uh, some of these notes. We will share a report, a write-up of these conversations together with all the inputs you, you helped to produce. Thanks for that again. We were amazed last night to see the number of inputs we received from you on sticky notes and cards. Really, really helpful. So keep going, uh, please, uh, with these inputs. Speaking of which, uh, we'll have to do more work today. Now this will switch around, as we said, it will be peer produced. Uh, we'll have lots of working groups after uh, one more plenary and we will do cluster meetings. And the cluster meetings are a little bit more complicated today. So uh, Becca will briefly describe uh, what the plan is as, as we will um, have the cluster meetings later on, but not much opportunity to have everyone in the room and explain how it works. So over to you, Beck, and, and thank you again so much. This is, uh, we're off to a good start. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Urs. Um, so I have props in my hand because today's cluster groups um, are to invoke creativity and you get to create some flip books with one another. So uh, currently the time is from 3.15 to 4. We will have our second cluster group meetings. Uh, you will be going directly from breakouts to the cluster group meetings. So following the afternoon breakout, um, you will meet re back in the foyer and people will be holding up the animals again, so you'll refine the team. It will be the same team as yesterday. You'll go back to the space you were in yesterday. And the goal of the breakout is to create a collab two sets of flip books. Um, each will involve five cards that tell a little bit of a story of a challenge and an opportunity that you've identified as a group. So before I tell a little bit of details about that, Levin Kim, I don't know where you are, she's been driving so much of what's happening today. Huge props to Levin. Can we see a video of the flipbooks from a previous event? So this is from an event that we held uh, in Cambridge, Digitally Connected. So the teams also were, were employed to create challenges and opportunities. And so across five cards, they created a little bit of a story. Um, and you can see the numbers in the corners for some of them. So it sounds very scary to say, I'm gonna create a flip book out of five cards, but it can be a set of five words or a set of five images, one that lead to another that your groups will identify. Um, so uh, when you first meet together as the break or the cluster group, we ask you to sort of share a little bit of feedback from the cluster group that preceded it and to use that as a time and a space to share your ideas about a challenge or an opportunity that you might collectively illustrate in the flip books. Um, and because you have to create both a challenge and an opportunity, we suggest maybe your team break into two teams, one responsible for doing the cluster, one responsible for doing the opportunity. You'll have two folders, each of which have five cards in them. There are some pens in there. You can use some of the materials that were in the Wonder bags if you wish you can design them in any other way and so we hope that it's a creative exercise in a way to create something fun at the end of this that aren't just words on a page though those are very important and fun too but um, a little bit more life in these flip books uh, so that will be today um, it's from 3 15 to 4 at 4 o'clock we head into a break um, until 4 30 where we will then re um, assemble but uh, you can take into the break to keep working on this assignment of the flip books if you wish. And when you're done with them at 4.30, you'll take the two folders and you'll bring them to the info desk. There will be baskets for you to deposit them. So um, there we go, that's with that. And so thank you so much and I'm gonna hand it back so we can keep moving. <laughs>